Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, folks, we're going to talk about the Vols going cold down in Florida. Now, that's not a place to go cold. It's usually pretty warm down there, but, boy, we struggled. We're also going to talk about winners and losers in recruiting this year. Of course, uh, signing National Signing Day was yesterday, which wasn't really a big deal because everybody had already early signed for the most part. But we're going to talk about the winners and the losers. But let's get into this basketball game last night. And the numbers pretty much speak for themselves. Um, the Gators jumped out on us on the front end, and they were up by about 11 points. And then we regained our footing, went ahead at one time. Ziegler hit a couple of three-pointers. But then uh, we fell back into our crappy shooting. As you can see, 19 for 68, 27% total. And then, of course, 5 for 25 from 3, which is 20%. You are not – look – you cannot shoot 27% overall and 20% from three and win a ball game away against a decent team like Florida. Florida's not a great team, but they're decent, and they will beat you at home if you don't show up. And we simply did not. We were ice cold, just like the Kentucky game, almost identical. Identical. And it seems like about every fourth or fifth game, we go into one of these doldrums and we can't hit a shot. And here you can see uh, Kentucky shot 44%, which is solid. That's a good number. 35% from three-point, which is decent. We did out-rebound them 43-36 to 36 because if you watch that ball game, you know Florida was getting back as quickly as they could. They weren't really going for offensive rebounds. They didn't want us to get any fast break points. And I think that was by design. They thought, you know what, let's make them beat us in the half court. And as we look at the guys that scored for us, uh, Ziegler had a good game. He scored 15 points. He didn't shoot great, 31%, but he did score. Uh, Viscovi was very uh, poor from the field, two for 12, one for six from three. That's not like him. Olivier, you know, he scored some points, but he was not shooting well. Phillips wasn't a big factor in the game. James played poorly, uh, shot the ball poorly. And as I've told you, as James goes, it almost seems like this team sort of goes. The other guys didn't really do much. Awaka only played one minute. Key, one of our best scorers, didn't score a point, which is, man, we just really shot the ball like crap. That's just all there is to it. It was just like the Kentucky game. Uh, let's see what Florida did well. Uh, Castleton gave us grief the entire game. He almost played the entire game, which for a seven-footer is kind of rare, but they needed him badly, and he scored 20 points. We just can't seem to stop this guy. He's a quality player. Lofton scored 14, two for three from the three-pointer. And everybody shot well from three-point for the Florida for the most part. They had a few guys that didn't make any, but right in here, this was their best shooters. And that's why they shot 44%. So obviously a disappointing outing. And we just, like I say, about every fourth or fifth game, we go ice cold and we don't really have an answer. And that's, uh, that's frustrating. It's going to make it tough for this team to make it to the final four with that kind of every third or fourth or fifth game, they go ice cold. But... Hey, you know, everybody's got to deal with it. Alabama went ice cold the other day and uh, couldn't hit anything, and they got blown out by Oklahoma. Come back the next game, and they hit everything. So it just, you know, basketball is very fickle. It just, it's like baseball. It's fickle. You know, you can sit up there and make the best-looking shots you've ever seen. If it's not going to go, it's not going to go. They got to regroup after this, and it's really unfortunate that the two losses that we've got are the two teams that I dislike the most. First, Kentucky in basketball, they just annoy me to no end. We lose to them at Thompson Bowling. We can't hit anything. And then we lose to Florida, which I just don't like Florida, period. Okay? I don't like them in anything. If they played tiddlywinks, I would root against them. But, of course, we go down there and lay an egg. I'm going, man, you know, we've got this great season. We're ranked number two. We've only lost one game in the SEC till last night. And our two losses that we end up with are the two teams that I dislike the most. I even dislike them more than Auburn. And that's just because uh, Bruce Pearl, and I don't dislike Bruce Pearl. Look, he was a good coach for us, but he's, he's got to quit giving away those free barbecue sandwiches. That really cost him and cost us. But we do have Rick Barnes, and Rick has done a great job. So, you know, in no way am I down on that guy. It's just unfortunate that every once in a while we have a poor shooting game. And that's, like I said, that's every team in, in the nation. Now let's talk about recruiting. We're going to talk about the winners and losers, mainly in the SEC, because that's really what I cover and what I'm interested in. But um, there were some real winners in the SEC, and there were some losers, too, and we're going to cover that. And before I get started, I'm going to probably need a little bit of help. Peyton and Carl, could you help me out a little bit? Omaha! Huh? Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right, so let's get into this. We're going to start out with the biggest winner in the SEC, and that's Alabama. Yeah, Emperor Palpatine, he just loaded up. <laughs> he got nine five-stars. 
nine five stars. That's insane. You know, there's only like 25 or 35 stars in the country, and they get nine of them. It's almost too much. I sit here and I look at this and I go, how are you going to keep nine five stars happy and you're not? This is almost too much in one class. And we saw this happen with Texas A&M last year. You can over-recruit, believe it or not. And that's when you get so many five stars. Look, they all think they're going to play and they're not going to. So you're going to have four or five of those guys that will probably transfer out over the next 12 to 18 months because they're going to get in there and think they're world beaters. And, you know, Alabama's loaded. So when they go in there and they get no playing time and they're sitting on that bench, they're probably going to get fed up and do what they did at Texas A&M. And three or four of them will leave. But what are you going to do, turn down a five-star? Emperor Palpatine's not going to do that. But you sit here and you look at this class – and it just looks exactly like Texas A&M last year. I mean, five-star after five-star, after it just goes all the way down. It's ridiculous. So as much as I hate to admit it, Alabama was the big winner in the SEC. The second one was Georgia, of course. They're coming off two national titles, and they had a really nice class. As you can see here, they had five five-stars, 17 four-stars, which is kind of average for them. I mean, that's just what they do. Now, Texas and Oklahoma had a couple of nice classes. They're not quite in the SEC yet, but they're coming. LSU, of course, did well. And LSU's got a great recruiting base down there. And now with um, Brian Kelly, uh, I think they're going to recruit well pretty much from this point forward. So they had a good solid one, number six. Then you see Tennessee at number nine. And the reason I'm very comfortable with this class is because we filled a bunch of really important needs. First of all, the most important need was quarterback and picking up Nico, which is he's the top quarterback in the country, is huge. That's almost like picking up two or three five stars. That's how important quarterback is. It really should be weighted differently. You should weight a quarterback times two, especially one that this, this highly rated because he will absolutely impact every play in the game on offense in a major way. We also picked up some great defensive players, which is where we really needed help. David Hobbs, he's a five-star with some of the services, four on this one. Picked up a great wide receiver who they had listed as the 500th player in the country. He wound up being top 100. Caleb Herring, a great edge rusher. Picked up a, a sensational linebacker in Arian Carter, which is what we needed. We lost two uh, linebackers, one to the NFL, one uh, transferred out. So this was a real good pickup, especially with Saban sitting in his house a week before uh, early signing day. This uh, Cam Seldon, this guy could really be a difference maker. We're going to see. You know, He might be a really electric player. He is fast and big. A 4'3", 40, a 210, 215 pounds. I mean, this guy... He could be dangerous. That's right. Nice, man. I am dangerous. Then you go down the list. Ethan Davis, a fantastic tight end. He got hurt this year, so he wasn't able to continue to move up. He would have been a top 50 player, in my opinion. This is a great uh, cornerback for us. Uh, Jordan Matthews, Ricky Gibson, another 4-3-40 guy, cornerback. Some nice – I wish we'd have picked up some more offensive linemen. We did get a good guy out of the transfer portal, actually, too. But um, that's the one place where we were a little bit weak in our recruiting. I think that's why they went to the portal. I'd like to see seen a little bit better in the offensive line. We continued to do well in linebacker core. Here's another cornerback. This was actually the number one player in the state of Kentucky, depending on the service. So I think this guy's going to end up being a good player for us. And all down the line, several really good players. Here's some offensive linemen. Then we had some additional uh, linemen. Chandavian Bradley, he was actually a five-star in one of the services. Uh, Weathersby looks like he's going to be a good player. This guy's a huge running back. He might actually be a steal. They've got him listed as a three-star, but I, I don't know if they've got that correct. And all down the line. And there's Nate Spielman. He's actually a heck of an athlete, and his brother is the number one player in the state of Tennessee, and we're recruiting him hard for linebacker. Then you go down to our transfers. This was probably our most important one, and he was our last one, and that's Gabe Judy Lolly. We need help at cornerback, and this guy could definitely be that for us. He was a starter at BYU. John Campbell Jr., a uh, offensive tackle out of Miami, a fine player. Another defensive lineman out of uh, Arizona State. This is a six foot five uh, wide receiver that I think could be an absolute home run. He was almost a five star coming out of high school. Then we picked up a really good linebacker, probably the best player on BYU's defense. Another good offensive tackle out of Texas. And here's our kicker. And then a real nice tight end that's got NFL aspirations, and rightfully so. 
So I think Tennessee falls into that winner category because we filled so many critical needs. You know, we were the highest ranked team that had obvious holes in our defense in and in various places on our team, yet because of Josh Heupel's offense and then the great play of Hendon Hooker, and then Joe came in real nicely too at the end of the year, we just really kind of pulled it out and 11-2, and two, won the Orange Bowl, and did more with less than any team in the country, and that's because we're building Miramar and Knoxville where we have these fine coaches, you know, football, basketball, and baseball. We've got three of the best coaches in the country, and we bring in good talent, and we make them better. The elite, best of the best. We'll make it better. Look, it's Top Gun. You know, if you're out there and you're a recruit and you want to get better, Knoxville's the place to come. It's pretty obvious. Now, one of the big losers, and it's hard to say a loser when you finish 14th in recruiting, but this is Florida, and I don't care what you do down there. You're going to finish top 20 if you're terrible because Florida is within an hour or two of some of the best recruits in the country, and they've got a good tradition. But the reason I put them in the loser category is a couple things. First of all, they're coming off two losing seasons, six and seven, six and seven again with uh, Billy Napier. And on top of that, you know, they really took a dump in their Cheerios over uh, Jaden Rashada. That was a nightmare. They promised the kid 13 million bucks, or at least their collective did, and didn't come up with the money. He winds up uh, at Arizona State, and now every recruit in the country is out there going, look, can you trust this collective in Florida? Are they going to tell you one thing and then do something completely different and leave you hanging? And the bad part for that was Jaden Rashada had a really good offer from Miami. Well, he commits to Florida. Miami moves on, that money's spent elsewhere, and then he can't come back and get it. So, I mean, that's one of the worst things you can do is promise somebody something. Make them uh, go down another path they wouldn't have gone down, but then they can't go back and get the uh, money they were promised from another team because it's too late. So I think he's got, you know, this going to end up in litigation, no question, and it really put a poor look on Florida because every team in the country is going to use that to recruit against them, and rightfully so. You don't promise somebody, sign a piece of paper, and say, hey, we're going to do this, and you're a collective, and then don't come through. You're, you're going to get trashed. And that's pretty much why I put Florida in the loser category. Texas A&M, you know, they had an okay uh, recruiting class. They got plenty of oil money down there for NIL, but I don't know that people trust what's going on there with their coach, uh, Jimbo especially after a losing record. South Carolina came up at the end and wound up with a pretty good recruiting class, number 16. They got killed in the transfer portal. They lost their best running back, their best tight end, their best defensive lineman. I mean, they lost a bunch in the transfer portal. But um, Beamer brought it home pretty good in recruiting and wound up 16th. So I'm not going to put them in the loser category because of that. They're kind of in between. You know, they made a little bit of a comeback. Auburn, I, I got to give them credit for finishing top 20. Now, Auburn's in a great recruiting area, so this doesn't surprise me any. And I think their coach, Hugh Freeze, whether you like him or don't like him, and I know that he is as polarizing as it gets, everywhere he's been, he's won, and I think he'll do the same at Auburn. Now, how high – look, you can win a national championship at Auburn. They've done it a couple of times. But, you know, he's got to rebuild this thing because it was kind of a dumpster fire uh, last couple of years. Arkansas is just kind of hanging around the 20th area. That's that's just so-so. Mississippi State, they lost their coach. I'm not even going to comment on that because they really got put in a bad spot. That's very unfortunate that uh, Mike Leach uh, passed away. And, you know, it was just – I hate that for Mississippi State and his family and all that. That's a shame. Ole Miss did nothing in recruiting. Just about 27th is ridiculously poor, especially when Mississippi's got tons of good recruits. But – um our boy Lane Kiffin, look, he, he's Mr. Transfer Portal. You know, that's just the way he likes to recruit. You know, he's going to pull kids out of there, and that's exactly what he's done. So he's going to finish real high on Transfer Portal and not really care as, enough, as much about recruiting. I think part of that, too, is that he knows he's a flight risk. You know, he'd rather have somebody that's ready to go and uh, only going to be there a year because, look, he doesn't know if he's going to be there more than a year. That's just who he is. He wrecked this year's uh, season by not – putting to rest the fact that uh, Auburn was trying to hire him, and they were 7-0 and and then 8-1, and and then those rumors just exploded. And he did absolutely nothing to really uh, calm down those fears, and his team kind of collapsed. And same thing happened with Hugh Freeze at Liberty. You cannot have those rumors out there. It destroys the team chemistry and their effort, 
And in college football, there is a fine line between winning and losing. And if your team's down and they feel like you're going to desert them, they're not going to put forth that effort. They're going to lose. That's just a fact. You know, there's not huge separation between the number 10 team and the number 20 team. You know, if you go in there and you're not fully focused and giving it everything you got, that number 20 team's going to whoop you. You can just count on it. Kentucky finishes 31st. That's not so good. But that's pretty typical for Kentucky. Missouri, 33. That's not so good, especially when you're in the SEC. Look, that'd be okay if you're in the ACC for Kentucky and Kansas, but I'm putting you all in the loser category because you cannot be in the 30s and expect to uh, play against Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, Florida. It's just not going to work. And then you got Vandy. They're not even in the top 50, and uh, you know they're just the poindexter <laughs> of uh, college football. You know, it's just it's just not going to work out for them. But, you know, I'm glad that we get to play them once a year and uh, gives you that victory in the SEC. You know, if we were playing the ACC or one of these other divisions, we'd have four or five Vanderbilts that we'd play a year, and we could act like we were big dogs even when we're not. But when you play in the SEC, you get like one easy win, maybe two, and the rest of them you're going to have to fight for like crazy. So that's why the SEC is the best and always will be. I just can't ever see where the SEC is not going to be the top uh, conference in the country. And anybody that thinks other than that is is foolish. You're just wasting your time and, and you're puffing up your chest for no reason. We're number one because that's just how it is. All right, folks, just wanted to cover those things. Unfortunately, the Vols got beat by Florida. I'm not happy about that. Winners and losers in recruiting. I certainly think Tennessee falls in that category. Uh, Florida Gators. They're just, I got to put them in the loser category. And we went over all the teams, which was kind of interesting. And uh, if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know to continue to cover the Vols, the SEC, and all that good stuff. And if you've not subscribed, it's right here on the left. Just hit that little button. Costs you absolutely nothing. Helps me out. I would certainly appreciate it. And if you, and YouTube puts a video right over here. It's my most recent one. Pretty popular. Be sure to check that out. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.